wonderful, beautiful, yeah. and you look wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Remain standing for just a second. We say to you, we salute you this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because motherhood is, as the thing said in the announcements, it can sometimes be stressful and well, come on, you come talk with me. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. It can be sometimes stressful and challenging, challenging and demanding. Demanding. Yeah. yeah. Taking all your timing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you're anointed yeah. to mother. And so today we salute you. And to all of the expecting mothers. Well, I'm not yet pregnant, yet you are expecting. expecting. Oh, and it won't be long now. Wow. Babies coming to Lifeline Church. We call them forth now in Jesus' name. We call forth baby girls and baby boys and Wounds are open in Jesus' name. So we salute you, all of our mothers. One more time, can we love on them one more time, all of the mothers? You can be seated in Jesus' name. And I want to take a minute before we get into the word this morning and salute this pretty woman here. Yeah. Listen. You ain't got to clap. I, I clap for all by myself. But there is no me without her. There is no royal household without her. It doesn't work without her. She's a cream in my coffee. She's a syrup on my waffles. Come on. Man. And, and I, I got to I got to um, witness her this last couple of years juggle everything um, while going to school and yesterday she walked across with her master yeah and um, it's quite an accomplishment for her because it's been a long time since she went through the journey of starting with the, the bachelors, right? And, and every step of the way, she says, what do you think? I says, go for it. Do what's in you to do. And whatever I can do to assist you. So there's been many a nights when and I got in the bed. I don't even know what time she came to bed. <laughs> but she was in her office working and getting this together and turning in papers and, and I says go ahead and do the thing and so just sitting there yesterday and watching her receive her degree and I said man God is a good God I'm a, I'm a, I just want to get all my stuff out then I'm going to give her to y'all and um, we talked about it I'm like and if, if, if that's been a, in your heart to do, go after it. Here's what she said. I, you know, I want to do it, but I don't know this, this, the monies and the this. I said, don't worry about none of that. Some of y'all talking yourself out of it before you even start. Because we're not out here trying to pay for stuff. We're out here believing for stuff. 
because the just shall live by faith. And I can promise you, whatever is in your heart to do, you probably can't afford it. <laughs> but he didn't ask you to afford it. He asked you to do it. Step out. Move in faith. Don't matter if you ain't. It, 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 it does not matter what you have in your pocket. And so I, I'm just godly and husbandly, if that's a term, proud of her. Just to see her smile. And I was sitting, because we couldn't sit with them, of course, and I took a picture of the back of her head. And whether she knows it or not, I always got her back. I'm watching when even she don't know I'm watching. And so I want to say to her in front of all of you today, how much I simply adore you. And you're the mother of our two boys and we went through that whole deal and from not being able to have children to miscarriages to having two beautiful children. God is good. And so today, with everything that could be going on or could be going wrong, I choose to focus on the fact that God is faithful. And I choose to live in this moment standing here with you and my family here and all of Lifeline family here. Tell your neighbor, say, just live in the moment. Tell them, say, don't miss any more moments. Don't miss, listen, don't miss any more moments worrying about tomorrow. Live in this one. He's already in your tomorrow right now. Just one day at a time. And so before I give it to her, um, she, she, I, I, I says, I want you to speak today. And she says, no, I, got, I had a whole lot going on. I just want to chill today. And so it's Mother's Day. I'm like, let her chill. So after she speak, we'll just go home. If, no, I'm just, um, help me one more time honor and celebrate London, Sarita. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. God is good, isn't he? This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, my goodness. I love that scripture, as you can tell. But God is just an amazing and amazing more. God. One more. My journey, let's see, 2011, I did my, finished my bachelor's degree, and I thought, hey, that was it. And then the Lord, I believe, impressed upon my heart to go back. And I'm like, well, Lord, I got this, I got this, I got this, and I got this. And he was like, hey, but I got you. I'm like, okay, okay. So I went back. I started October 2017. This was an 18-month program. And all throughout the program, I'm just believing God. And I said with my mouth, I want to finish this program with straight A's, 4.0. I said, even with everything I got going on, 4.0 is my portion. And so all the while, you know, me being sometimes a procrastinator, you know, I would turn in things late. And I'm like, I still believe you, God, for 4.0. And I was going through and going through every, every grade I got. I'm like, yes, 4.0, 4.0. I would share with pastor. I would share with the boys. And I, I just thank God because I want to be an example for my children. I want to be an example to let them know, hey, it's never too late. You can do it. And I, I put these grades in front of them. I say, hey, I got a 4.0. Now you can get a 4.0. So I'm pushing them. I'm allowing God to push me so I can push them and I can stretch them. But with all of this that has been going on this, this past weekend with Mother's Day, I'm just so excited. And everyone who has, you know, texted me, you know, gave me encouraging words, even throughout the journey. I started this journey with three other young ladies at um, a women's conference that we went to. Two of them were supposed to go through the program with me, but they chickened out. But God is good. They, and one of them, they don't know who they are, but... 
Hey. But listen, you have to have a support system too. I had a support system. They pushed me to get the brochure, to fill out for the classes. Even when you don't have a natural support system, you always got Holy Ghost cheering in your back, cheering your back saying, go ahead, daughter, go ahead, son. So not only did I have a natural support system, I had a spiritual support system. So I want to say to you today, if you have something in your heart, and I know you do, don't let fear stop you. Because I tried to let fear stop me, too, from getting that brochure to making that first call. You know how it is when you, you know, apply for universities. You make that first call. They don't stop. They just keep going. They call you back, and I say, hey, just give me a minute. they like, they're a little pushy. But I needed that push, and some of you need that push today. You have something in your heart. Go for it. Go for it. Don't let fear stop you because this, fear will keep you bound in your tracks. Fear will stop you from going forth with what God has called you to do. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So if you ever walk in fear, just quote that scripture. That scripture has, has sustained me throughout my entire life. Fear, God knows where you're supposed to be, and the enemy knows where you're supposed to be too. So his job is to keep that fear, keep you gripped with fear. Somebody has fear in here today. If you have fear in here today, I want you to stand up. Fear of anything. Fear of graduating. Fear of going back to school. Fear of, fear of having children. Fear of losing children. Fear any type of fear. God, the enemy is trying to stop each and every one of you from fulfilling your destiny, from fulfilling your purpose in life. God knew what your purpose was before you were even in your mother's womb, but you have allowed and we have allowed fear to stop us. But today I say fear no more. Fear has not, does not have any more control over us. So in the name of Jesus, I bind any fear that has tried to attack these people's minds, attack their spirits and their souls. I bind it now in the name of Jesus and I loose the spirit of love. I loose the spirit spirit of sound mind. I loose the spirit of the Lord to just flow freely throughout them now in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that they have the mind of Christ. And I thank you, oh God, that they think on whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. They begin to think on these things. And when those, in, when those thoughts come, I thank you that they will cancel them down. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of the darkness so I decree and I declare that fear cannot no longer have you in the name of Jesus fear be bound in the name of Jesus and when fear tries to grip and tries to rear its ugly head I decree and I declare that you even do it afraid as they went they were healed as they went they were delivered as they went they were set free as they went they got an associate's degree as they went they got a bachelor's degree as they went they got a master's degree as they went they got a doctorate as they went they had children as they went so I thank you Lord that fear no longer has control over us but we take control over fear today and we say fear no more in the name of Jesus so we give you glory, honor and praise for it in Jesus name and if you believe the word of the Lord I want you to give the Lord a shout of praise Yes. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is an amazing time to step up and to step forth into all God has called you to do. He's already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's just waiting on us to step out. 
So I decree and I declare that today is the day that we'll all step out and do what God has called us to do. No more fear in Jesus' name. So, you all helped me celebrate her this weekend. Uh, you know, what, what, what's the new thing? Um, celebrations hit better when you got more money. What's, what's the new term? It hit harder? Or the, you all know what I'm talking about. Is it, things hit different when it's, so celebrations hit better when you got a little bit more money. Did I say it right? Okay. Y'all cash out past London. Bless it if you feel that too. Hey. Okay. Can I have 10 minutes? 10 minutes and you can get to brunch. Well, 15 minutes. Make it 20. But no more than 20, because I have a brunch reservation myself. Come on. You know, you can't be late for brunch. I'm excited that um, in two weeks we'll be going back to two services, um, 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. And so those who want to get in and out, I told you last week, the 8 o'clock service is a no whistles and bells service. It's, it's worship, word, um, and then you're, you're out of here exactly at 9 o'clock. So if you want to shout, run, and blow your whistle, I don't know who gave this sister a whistle. Um, this, this is my section right here. Nobody else blowing this section. <laughs> I'm blowing my whistle, and I hear another whistle. I said, wait a minute. And she ain't just blowing. She looking at me blowing. She challenging me. I promise you, if you have dealt with any amount of fear in any area, don't get religious on us. Just believe what was just declared over you in Jesus' name and walk free in the name of Jesus. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how much money you have or don't have. If God told you to do it, go after it. Tell your neighbor, say, just go after it. It's never too late. It's never too late. Go after it in Jesus. And that's just not regarding you know, school, whatever it is in your heart, whatever you've been sitting on, whatever you've been thinking about, whatever you, whatever's been keeping you up at night, whatever you can't stop, you can't get out of your head, go after it. In Jesus' name. I want to talk for 20 minutes, so 19 now. The realities of motherhood. I remember um, now, 14 years ago, when they called and said London had to have an emergency C-section um, because it was time for Justin to come. And um, I remember by the time I got to the hospital, everything was over. And he was already here. And they wouldn't let me see her, and they wouldn't let me see him. And I remember standing in the hallway um, just crying, and I remember I called Pastor Clyde, and he didn't cry with me, but that's okay. I called him. Um, and, and I remember when I finally got to see him, they had him in the nursery. And I walked down, and I looked through the window, because I still couldn't go in there and touch him, but I looked through the window at him and said, man, that's my son. That's, I, I got a child now. Um, and I went back down to see her, and I remember they gave her a little button to push and she pushed the button and uh, they bring the baby down there for her to see the baby and and then um, when she was tired and wanted to rest she'd call him back and they'd come and they'd get the baby put him back in the nursery and that was pretty cool um, you know um, and they would change him for her and all that because they let her just sit up and that kind of thing and then um, a couple of days later they gave us this news that we didn't I guess we knew, but we wasn't expecting because we got so comfortable. It says, okay, you can take them home now. <laughs> so, oh, okay, we get to take them home. But what didn't go home with us was the button. <laughs> no nurse came home with us. We didn't, we didn't get to say, come get them now and take them back. And, and they didn't give us a manual either. 
which is mighty funny how you buy a television, there's a manual. You buy a bike, there's a manual. You get new cable, there's a manual. But with these children, there's no manual. They gave us a couple of burp cloths and a pacifier and said, you can take them home now. A lot of mothers here have endured through and mothered through and taught through and corrected through and you had no manual. A lot, a lot, the only manual you had was your mother or your grandmother or big mama or auntie and you kind of watched them and some of the things that you caught from them wasn't even the best but you caught it and you didn't realize that it wasn't the best so you tried to use what they gave you and realized, wait a minute, this really don't work that way. And so we normally talk about in, in Sunday morning, Mother's Day sermons, we talk about the glorious part of mothering. We talk about the beautiful part, but not the brutal part. Because as gracious as you are and as anointed as you are, there is a brutal, a brutal part. Am I saying it right? Brutal. Sometimes I get those words kind of brutal, 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 brutal. <laughs> say it for me. Come on. You didn't say it right either. You spit on the lady's neck trying to say you brutal. <laughs> we talk about the beautiful part, but not the brutal part. And they're glorious. And we talk about the honor. And yes, every mother here, even our expecting mothers, deserve double honor. Yes, you do. Clap for yourselves. <laughs> An honor that a couple of flowers and brunch once a year doesn't really do justice. With all of what they do, I watch how London is, you know, we said we're the men of the house, but the woman is really the manager of the home. She manages this and that, and she has multiple things going on, and she's feeding the babies and cooking, and she's doing homework and ironing and getting stuff out the dryer and putting some in the washer, and she's doing multiple things at one time, and, and sometimes I can't even find my socks. Come on here. And I listen sometimes, on, even when we're getting dressed, and, and, and I have to step back because it's really funny because you realize she's one person, and in our house, there's three of us guys, and, and we hear her name about 20 times in the morning. Ma, London, Ma, Ma, where is this, London? You seen that? Ma, Ma. And she's trying to get herself dressed. And I realize she manages the home. She, even the last few weeks, she's kind of been challenged with a cold, but she never stopped. And there's sometimes I, I, I get a slight sneeze and I got to shut down for three days. <laughs> I'll be back next week. I got, my nose been running. Come on here. And so while we talk of the glory and, and, and the glorious parts of motherhood, we fail to candidly address the realities of motherhood. Some difficult realities. What happens when your child goes prodigal? What happens when your daughter comes home pregnant in her teen years? What happens when your son comes home and says, I got somebody pregnant in their teen years? What happens when your child goes into stage four rebellion? Drugs and alcohol and false religions and just stupidity sometimes. Sometimes it's just... It's just stupid. You're like, you, I didn't teach you that. I didn't tell where you get that from. That's just dumb, boy. What happens when what you want for your child is not what they want for themselves? What happens when your wisdom is disregarded and ignored? What happens when you never increase your capacity for their pain and now your life is saving them from themselves continually? What about when you feel like a failure as a mother? I'm going somewhere. It's not a gloom and doom message. What about when you ain't speaking to your own mother? What about this is a great day of Mother's Day and brunches and flowers and pastel colors, but somebody's still mad with somebody? What about mom went on to glory and you still haven't healed? Your heart is still broken. What happens when seemingly your prayers regarding your children go unanswered? We often highlight 
the Proverbs 31 woman, the virtuous woman, price far above rubies, businesswoman, homemaker, caretaker, notoriety, all of that. And we neglect discussing the biblical women who are also virtuous and relate more with the adversities of motherhood. Look at Eve. Eve was the first mother. Yet she lost one son at the hand of another. When Cain murdered Abel. Let's preach about that. How do you deal with that? What's the fallout of that? What about Rebecca? Isaac's wife who struggled with favoritism of her son Jacob over Esau. I'm not going to teach this. You got to read your Bible on these. What about Josabad? I think I'm calling her name right. She was Moses' mother. She loved Moses, but she had to give him up. But although they endured great difficulties, they were all women of faith. Can you say faith? faith? Great faith in God because this is how we deal with and overcome the realities of motherhood. First John chapter 5 verse 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And faith is not just believing God is able, but knowing that he's already finished the work. So it's not a won't he do it, it's a thank God that he did it. Faith is coming into agreement, moms, with, with what he's already done and believing that regardless of how it looks now, something's about to manifest in your life. Faith is our great assurance. Listen at this one. That God has redeemed our biggest mistakes. How many of you mothers in here have made a mistake? Raise your hand. You've made a mistake raising your children. Raise your hand high. Be not condemned. Put your hands down. Because God has redeemed our greatest mistakes. Because many are the mistakes. Many are the troubles of the righteous. But he delivers. He rescues. And he restores us out of every one of them. And there is a wisdom available. Listen to me, mothers. There's a wisdom available for us to walk in. We talked about this on our last live about how we should be in a place where the wisdom of God flows so that we can produce at will what we want in every area of our life concerning mothering, concerning even parenting altogether. And so, yes, it can be stressful, but it doesn't have to be. Yes, it can be challenging, but it doesn't have to be. Yes, it could be gloomy, but it doesn't have to be because we live even as mothers by faith. And as you walk through the realities, the complexities, listen, the humanity of motherhood. Let's take a few lessons from the mother, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Number one, you got to choose to remain at his feet. Some of y'all looking and I'm almost finished. You got to choose to remain at his feet. Look at Luke chapter number 10 and verse number 38. Come on, Luke 10 and 38. Yeah. I just have a speech for you this morning. Is that all right? Now, while they were on their way, it occurred that Jesus entered a certain village and a, a woman named Martha received and welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary who seated herself, it's a choice, at the Lord's feet and was listening to his teaching. But Martha, somebody said Martha, Martha. overly occupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving. Now listen, there was much to be done because Jesus was at their house. You ever had a guest come to your house? Come on here. You ever had a barbecue, a, a birthday party, a baby shower, people coming over today, and you spent some time, I hope you did, getting ready for them to come. You cleaned the bathroom. Come on here. You, you swept the floor. You, you put up stuff that you just sits out all the time. You made the kids put their shoes up. Don't leave me here by myself. Y'all know. The house was a wreck Friday, but you said, you got guests coming over Sunday. Put that stuff away. Wash them dishes. Come on here. Hang up them clothes, get that coat, put them boots up from December, put them in the closet. We got guests coming over today. 
So there was a lot to be done. There's all, listen, there's always a whole lot to do. And you ain't got to look for it. Something always comes up to do. And so, so, so she was overly occupied and too busy and was distracted with much serving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to come and help me, to lend a hand, to do her part along with me. Verse number 41. But the Lord replied to her by saying, Martha, Martha. Somebody holler, Martha, Martha. Martha, Martha. You are anxious and you are troubled about many things. Look at here, ladies. There is need of only one or but a few things. Mary has chosen the good portion, that which is to her advantage. I love that. To her advantage, which shall not be taken away from her. Mary made a decision that with all that's going on, I got to get the kids to school. I got to get them to practice. I got to get them to the gym. I got to pick them up from the gym. I got to take them off. I got to get them pick up their friends and take their friends too. I got to get their lunch. I got to do her hair. I got to take them to the barbershop. I got all this stuff to do. But in all of that, I had to make a decision to sit at his feet. You can't tell God, I, I, had to, I, had to, I had to go to PTA, and I had to, I had to get her hair done, and I had to take them down to volleyball. I, I got all that. I got all that. But you got to make a decision in that, mothers. The realities of motherhood, faith in God, make a decision. Mary chose to sit with all that was going on. Hey, hey, because if I don't sit with him, all this stuff will leave me frustrated and confused and mad and angry, but I got to sit with him so I can get this in this place of peace. So I can take them to basketball without cussing them out in the car. Come on here. I can take her to get her hair down without snatching the curls out when she get them done because I've been with Jesus. So you got to make a decision. You got to choose to remain at his feet. Number two, I ain't got time. I got a brunch to go to. Um, so turn to him during critical times. Number two, turn to him during critical times. Look at John chapter two. This is, this is Mary, Jesus' mother. If it worked for her, it worked for us. John chapter two, verse number one. Do you have it? Pull it up in the King James Version. Turn to him during difficult times. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Somebody said Galilee. Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Look at here. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Are y'all changing the gods? Come on here. Give them a hand. Look at that. All right. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no more wine. And Jesus said unto her, now I don't understand why Jesus got smiled with his mama. He says, woman, what have I to do with thee? My, ooh. I just, I just felt the slap. That's like our mom coming and saying, um, um, Reds, they out of offering buckets. What do they got to do with me, mom? I, I'm not preaching no more this month. I'm, I'm out, Jack. Because I don't care how old you get, mama is still mama. Amen. Can I help you with that for just a second? Because some of y'all think you're you older than your mama now. And your mouth, your mouth bigger than your mama. And your... Yeah, come on here. Come on here. And Jesus said to her, woman, what did I have to do with it? Now you can study this out. I'm, I'm making, making Josh of it, but it's, it's, it's meaningful in all of this. My hour is not yet come. Verse number five, his mother said unto the servants, she ignored exactly what he said. She didn't even hear what he said. She's like, whatever. She says, whatever he tell y'all to do, do it. She turned to him. Listen, listen, moms. She turned to him in critical times. You got to stop turning to the red table and turning to Oprah and turning to your girlfriends. And you got you got to stop turning to that. You got to turn to him. You got to pull up a seat, you and the Holy Ghost, and say, here is what's going on in my house. Here's what's going on in my marriage. Here's what's going on with my children that I gave birth to, but I don't understand right now. I need some wisdom on this. Whatever he tells you to do, 
do it. Now, they are out of wine, Sean. They don't have any, there's no more Hennessy at this party. That's not what they was, that's not wine? See, I, I was just checking to see what y'all, some of y'all said, that, that, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't wine, well. What's wine? What's wine? It's, you, you don't know. Burlo? They called them out. Look at it. They called, what, what is it? Oh, don't be quiet now. We, we, we know you used to be, but you ain't that no more. It's all right. We've been delivered. We don't drink on Sunday no more. Come on here. Oh. It's real security guy right here. I, he on flinch. I'm trying to make him laugh. I'm walking. He ain't just looking. He's like, So they were out of wine. There was no more wine. There was no more. It's, 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 Mad Dog is not wine, is it? No. No. That's poison. Listen, listen. That was before, before the Lord had delivered me. That was my first drink. Listen, they used to have those big um, um, McDonald's um, cups. You get the refills or whatever. And they put Mad Dog in there, Cisco. And Boone's Farm. They was trying to kill me. They was trying to kill me. And they and they they mixed it up in the, the McDonald's cup, Al, Pastor Al, and said, "Here, let's have a good time." Well, I didn't have a good time. But back back to the scripture. Some of y'all ain't never drank. Anybody, anybody ever drank in here but the Lord didn't deliver you? Raise your hand. Y'all such liars in church. It's okay. It's all right. Okay. All right. So there was no more wine. I got, oh, I'm out of time. I didn't even see the clock. Okay, can I, get, can I get three more minutes? Three more. Okay, so, so verse number six. Come on, I, 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 got, I got to move. Verse six. Verse six. Verse six. This must be stuck. That's okay. And there were set there six water pots of stone. We're talking about going to him. In critical times. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins, or firkins apiece. Come on, verse number seven. And Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water. Somebody said water. water. Now they are out of wine. And he tells them to fill these water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. Verse number eight. And he said unto them, draw out now. Now they're, 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 First of all, it's a bad thing to run out of wine and the governor is sitting here and, and we at this party and we didn't plan right. It's kind of like, it's kind of like going to a restaurant and they had a chicken. You ever been to a chicken place that's all they sell is chicken? And, they, and you walk in and say, well, we out of wings, we out of thighs, we out, what, 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 is, what is going on here? It's, it's a chicken, what, what, why we open? And so, so the governor's sitting here waiting, waiting. Can, come on, can I bring this into this time? He's waiting for his wine. And nobody has got enough guts to tell him, we're out. So they go, and the mother tells Jesus, they're out of wine. He said, I ain't got nothing to do with that. She said, whatever I tell you to do, do it. He says, fill the water pots to the brim. And, and, and then he says this, because he always pushes you to act on what he told you to do. Some of y'all sitting on it. You got to act on it. Some of y'all fill the water pots with, with, to the brim, but you never draw out. Ha! Nothing happens till you draw out. The miracle is in the doing. So he says, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. And verse number nine says, and when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not which it was, but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Uh-oh. 
verse 11 and 10, and said unto him, every man, this is some powerful stuff here. It's some powerful stuff right here, Jack. And, and, and know who, notice who kicked this off, Mary. Ladies, when you're in critical times, you got to know how to, how to set it off. <laughs> touch, touch a woman next to you and say, you got to know how to set it off. <laughs> and you can't be deterred when they come back like Jesus and said, ain't got nothing to do with me. You got to set it off. That's good stuff right there. Mary set this off. He says, he says, every man at the beginning do it set for good wine. He, this is, you know, and, and when men have well drunk, they put out the cheap stuff. But thou hast kept the good until now. Y'all save the best, glory to God, for last. When you're in critical times, women of God, don't you sit down and put your head down, but you pick your head up, pick your face up, put the word of God in your mouth, and set it off. Set it off regarding your children. Set it off regarding your husband. Set it off regarding your family. Stop looking cute, but ain't got no power. Skip your red bottoms. Where's the blood on your lips? Set it off. And said, not in my house, not with my son. The seed of the righteous is blessed. And I don't care how it looks right now. I'm going to set it off. And before I take it back, I'll add more to it. Somebody holler, set it off. Y'all been crying too much and in the prayer line too much. You have the authority in your mouth to set it off. Draw a line at your front door and say, devil, you stay over there because you can't come in here. Mary set this off. She set it off. She set it off. I don't know. He said he loved me. Stop crying. First of all, you gave it up too soon. Second of all, he wasn't talking to you. He was talking to the sex. He don't like you. He like the pleasure that you bring. Come on here. Set it off in yourself. And say, I'm bigger than this. I'm better than this. My price is far above rubies. And there's no more discounts right here. I ain't giving out no more discounts. He, he said, he say, y'all save, save the best for last. Oh, can I tell you some sisters? You think you've seen great. Oh, but your ladder, groshata, shall be greater. You ain't seen the best yet. But you got to set it off. You got to do something. You got to say something. You got to walk in your authority. Even in your house. I said even in your house. Well, he been acting ugly. Well, treat him like he acting like he's supposed to act. That takes a strong woman there. Anybody can throw some dishes. Come on here. Anybody can cuss when he come in. Anybody can, can light fire to his drawers. But, but can you act like he acting like he's supposed to act? That's a strong, virtuous woman that know how to set it off. But you listen to your girlfriends. I, I wouldn't take that if I was you. That's why it ain't you. That's why you ain't got nobody because you ain't got the same grace on you that I got on me. I'm anointed to deal with this knucklehead. And I'm all oh, y'all about to listen to me. Set it off. Somebody holler, set it off. Set it off. We didn't master being pretty. Pretty with no prayer life. Pretty with no word life. Pretty. Pretty. Can't hear from God. Pretty. I know you look good and your face is beat, but truth is the devil been beating you. Come on here. You got to stand up and set it off. 
So y'all thought we was going to say, and it's Mother's Day, and we thank God for the mothers. We bless the mothers over here, and we bless those over there. And for those upstairs, bless you too. Come on, it's time to set it off. It's time to stop crying and stop belly aching and woe is me and what happened to me. The devil is a liar because greater is he that is in you than is he that is in the world. So in critical times, set it off. What's lacking? She said, there's no more wine. What's, what is there no more of in your life? <sighs> set it off. Ah! And you got a number three. Write this down. Because I got to go. I got reservations, you see. <laughs> number three. You got to trust God's plan even when it looks like it's unraveling. Here's Mary at the foot of the cross. Y'all look at this too deep. This is this, is this man's mother. She, she, yeah, she's a virgin Mary, but she's a real woman, flesh and blood. She wasn't there in no glorious body. This is her son that she gave birth to, that she, that she changed his diaper and taught him how to read and sent him to school, to the synagogue. This is her son, and he's on a cross looking like a piece of meat. And she remember all the things he said he was going to do and was going to be and says, wait a minute, it don't look like that. Now what's going on? So she had to trust his plan. She had to trust his plan. Listen, when it seemed like it was unraveling. And some of y'all been praying to God and you've been trusting God and you got your faith confessions and you got your oil out and you done prayed over your child and devil ain't going to have him and he come home high. You got to trust the plan of God. You got to trust the fact that the seed of the righteous is blessed. I don't care if he come in here drunk as a skunk. I don't care. I, and I'm committed to my child. I'm committed. That's my son. That's my daughter. I don't care if he leaves here and come home a Muslim. Yep, I, I don't eat pork, mama. Come on in here. I'll make you some chicken. But that's my son. That's my daughter. That's my daughter, and the seed of the righteous is blessed. Come on. Come on. I know it looks terrible. It don't look no more bad than how Jesus was. This woman's son is on this cross looking like a piece of meat. The Bible says they couldn't even tell it was a man. Y'all too, y'all too busy looking at TV. Some white guy, first of all, he wasn't white, that's the first thing, but you got some guy up here with his head hung to the side and a piece of blood dripping right here and a little sash over his private part. That ain't Jesus. The Bible says they couldn't even tell that it was a man. So there was a piece of meat hanging on the cross and his mama looking up at him. Just imagine Jaden has these allergy flare-ups. And sometimes I, you would think, you know, he got to have operation. Because I'm like, oh, my God, look at his face. Look at his nose. Because that's my son. And you don't want nothing to happen to your children. You want to protect them and cover them. You want to always be okay. So imagine this woman at the foot of the cross, and her son is hanging here. They done spit on him. They done beat him. They done pierced him in the side. They got a crown on his head. All, and she's thinking about all the things he said was going to happen. And she said, well, wait a minute. This don't look like what he And all the people that a week ago were saying, all oh, hail to your son, praise God for your son, were saying, kill him. And he says to his disciples, behold your mother. Told his mama, behold your son. Look it up yourself. And right, right after that, right after that, right after that, he said, it's finished. He didn't kill him. He died. He gave up the ghost. At any point, he could have got down off that cross. <sighs> he could have caused flesh to close back in. He's, he's fully God and fully man. You mean tell me he, he, he caused somebody's leg to grow up but can't save himself? He didn't because of us. But we talk about him but not his mama. 
She was at the foot of that cross the whole time. She watched the whole thing. When he was carrying that cross, she was there. This was her boy. This was her boy. She potty trained this guy. Jesus didn't come here fully man. He came here as a baby through a birth canal. He had to be burped. That's this boy's mama standing here. But she trusted the plan of God even when it seemed like it was unravel. This is the day that we go beyond cute Mother's Day and we stand up as strong women of faith. We said, not on my watch, nay another day. You go out today, you eat your brunch, eat your steak, have your barbecue. But when you get through wiping your mouth, you say, this on and popping now. Things going to change around here. Sophia's home now. Come on here. <laughs> Y'all saw color purple. So Things are going to change right here. Sophia's home now. We ain't having this on my watch. I said we're not having it on my watch, not in my building, not in my job, not in my cubicle. We ain't having it. It's going to change around here. Tell your husband, I love you, but things are going to change around here. I can, I, I can show you better than I can tell you. Because I can do more in the spirit than arguing with you. Mm -hmm. I have the authority to speak a word over you and change your heart. Come on, women. They, they don't pay me enough. You can give yourself a raise today. Some of y'all missed that whole thing. Because you have the authority. Women of God. Yes, there are realities of motherhood. There are complexities of motherhood. There are things that we don't often talk about because we come in real cute. And we learn how to look the part. And y'all so pretty today. But I want some power with that pretty. <laughs> Tweet that. We need some power with that pretty. That from this Mother's Day forward, even those whose moms have went on to be with the Lord, don't let her legacy drop. You know why? Because she's a part of that great cloud of witnesses. She's in heaven cheering you on. She said, come on, son. Come on, daughter. It ain't worth that. Do this. I taught you better than that. Come on, pray about this. She's cheering you on. Stop saying, I wish mama was here. She is. In you. There ain't no witchcraft. She left a legacy here. She put things in you all her life, all your life, for you to carry on. Now that she's relocated to heaven. She's not gone, she's just relocated. Changed her address. Are you listening to me? but she left you with a boatload of work to do. And you can do it. She invested too much in you for you to get weary and quit. Be strong in the Lord, glory to God, and in the power of his might. Stand on your feet, please. Father, we thank you. Oh, lift your hands up, people of God. Father, we thank you for, as always, by your word, challenging us today. Short but potent. And Holy Spirit, we hear you. I pray for every mother here, every lady here, every woman of God that's under the sound of my voice. I pray grace is sufficient. Pray the grace and peace of God be multiplied to you. I pray that you know the hope of your calling in Christ Jesus. And I pray that even through the day's teaching, that a boldness comes up in your spirit to deal with the devil unlike you've never dealt with him before. And even because of you, families shall see the manifested goodness of God. 
And so we thank you, Lord, that today is not just about brunch and just not about flowers and pastel colors, but it's about legacy that we're living now and legacy that we're carrying on that has been left to us. So we honor you, Jesus. We thank you for what you've done in our lives. We thank you for deposits you've made even today. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We receive your word today with gladness. In Jesus' name. You received that. Clap your hands loud. Clap. Clap.